The Jeb Bush we saw in Tuesday's Republican debate was not the Jeb Bush who showed up to earlier debates. At least that's what a lot of people are saying tonight. Some of the most heated exchanges were between the former Florida governor and Donald Trump, including this one. Honestly, I think Jeb is a very nice person. He's a very nice person, but we need tough people. We need toughness. We need intelligence, and we need tough. Jeb said when they come across the southern border, they come as an act of love. You said in September 30th that ISIS was not a I, I, Am uh, I not talking or are you talking, Jeb? I'm you talking right back. now. I'm talking. You can go back. You're not talking. talking. You interrupted me, September 30th, Jeb. you going to apologize, Jeb? No. Am I allowed to finish? Yes, one at a time. Excuse go ahead, me. Mr. Am I allowed to finish? Mm -hmm. Governor Bush has not let up on Mr. Trump. He's keeping up in his attacks on the front runner. The question is, is it too late to make up lost ground? Poll numbers remain in the low single digits. And today, Russia's President Vladimir Putin had some unsolicited lavish praise for Donald Trump. Yet another bizarre turn in an election like none we have ever seen. The former Florida Governor Jeb Bush joins me now from El Paso. Good evening, Governor. Good evening. How are you doing? Great. Listen, I want to start with your reaction to the reporting from the Russian news agency. They quote Russian President Vladimir Putin saying that Donald Trump is a bright and talented person without any doubt and the absolute leader of the presidential race. Tonight, Donald Trump has responded. He says it's, quote, a great honor to be so nicely complimented by a man so highly respected within his own country and beyond. So what do you make of all that? I don't respect uh, Vladimir Putin. He is the leader of, a, of an important country, certainly not a regional power, as Barack Obama called him. But uh, to get praise from Vladimir Putin is not going to help Donald Trump. He's not a serious candidate, and he would bring chaos to the presidency just as he's done to this campaign. It's entertaining, but the simple fact is we're, we're at war right now with Islamic terrorism, and he's not offered one compelling, specific thing to do to keep us safe. It's all high volume. Lots of talk, but nothing specific because he hasn't taken the time to learn the issues. And I think we need someone with a steady hand in the presidency. And we're never going to beat Hillary Clinton with uh, grandiosity, with big language, without anything to back it up. You say he's not a serious candidate. Uh, you say he's a candidate of chaos. The question is, what are you going to do about it? Your campaign, Tim Miller said, you guys are doing due diligence, looking into whether you could pull out of that pledge you signed to report the Republican nominee, whoever it is, including Donald Trump. Why? Why are you doing that due diligence? Well, because, because Donald Trump had threatened to go uh, once again to become a third party candidate. And so um, I didn't know that they were doing this, but that's a smart thing to do in the campaign is to determine exactly what the consequences are for making that kind of decision. Look, I'm, my intention is to win the nomination. And I think as we get closer to the caucuses in Iowa and New Hampshire, that Donald Trump will begin to fall because he's not a serious candidate. You, uh, Listen to his comments as it related to the nuclear triad, for crying out loud. This is the, the pinnacle of our, of our uh, deterrent to be able to keep, be kept safe since the post-World War II era. He had no clue when Hugh Hewitt asked him that question. If he's going to be president of the United States, he needs to be a serious person, not someone who views this as a, some kind of entertainment show. To be clear, your campaign was doing due diligence to see if you could pull out of the pledge, if you could get out of having to support the ultimate Republican nominee if yeah. it was Donald no, Trump. No, exactly. No, I, I, that's right. It, it, it was related to his, his threats to leave the, leave the party. So now, Look, so now, this guy's so not going to win the nomination. That's the, that's the basic point. He's not going to win the nomination because he's not a serious candidate. And all the other candidates seem to be um, intimidated by him, but I'm not. He's a bully. He's not a, he's not a serious candidate. He's not offered compelling alternatives to the path that we're on. And we desperately need to change direction as it relates to our national security. Do you wish you could pull out of the pledge right now to support him if you won? Look, what I'm focused on is how do we create a strategy to destroy ISIS in the caliphate? We need to create a safe zone. We need to create uh, a no-fly zone. We need to make sure that we embed with the Iraqi military, that we arm directly the Kurds. And what Donald Trump is suggesting is that we ban all Muslims, which would make all of that impossible to do. That's my point. My point is that we're at war right now with radical Islamic terrorism. The President of the United States refuses to acknowledge it, and Donald Trump does as well. You know, you spent a lot of time on the campaign trail the last couple of months saying you were sick of talking about Donald Trump. Now, your super PAC went up with an ad today praising you for, uh, for going after Donald Trump. You do seem much more willing on the debates and on the stump to talk about Donald Trump. Why is this now a good strategy for your campaign? 
Well, my strategy is to talk about my plans, and when you can compare it to Donald Trump's, it makes it even more vivid that long before the attacks in Paris and the tragedy in San Bernardino, I laid out a specific proposal to be able to destroy ISIS, which is exactly what we need to do. And it requires America's leadership in the world. It requires building an army, Sunni-led in Syria, and getting back in the game in, as it relates to Iraq. And without American leadership, this isn't going to happen. We can't do it alone. And when you compare that to Donald Trump, who late September said that uh, ISIS was not a threat and says that let Russia take care of Syria when their interest is to prop up one of the most brutal regimes in the world, it shows the lack of understanding of where we are in the world today. Would he make a better president than Hillary Clinton? I don't think Hillary Clinton is going to be elected president of the United States. She's not trustworthy, uh, and her proposals aren't much better. You, you didn't answer my question. Would he make a better president than Hillary Clinton? No, I've learned not to answer questions. That's one of the things that you do now in, in, in political discourse. You answer what, what you want to say. Wait, so, so you're just not going to answer outright? I mean, don't, don't Republican voters deserve to know you're attacking Donald Trump every day now? which is something you got into reluctantly, but yeah, it is I now am. part of your campaign. So do you think he would make I, a better president than I don't than think Clinton? that he's qualified to be... Oh, absolutely, I'd be a better president than Hillary Clinton. That's no, why no. I'm running for president. Does Donald Trump. And my, Donald my, Trump point is, my point is, he's, he is not qualified to be commander-in-chief of the United States of America's greatest fighting force. And he's had a chance to bone up. God willing, he'll start doing it. But it looks like it, this is all about him, not about... Uh, creating strategies to keep us safe. And the world right now has been turned asunder, turned upside down because of the lack of American leadership. We don't need another version of that as the Republican nominee. Has the Republican primary process been hurt by his presence? Hurt? No, I mean, look, he's, we still have a long way to go. He's a, he's a gifted politician. He, he consumes all the news space. He's pretty, pretty effective at that. But uh, to have have this have these subjects be brought up at a time of uh, great national security uh, concerns I think is appropriate and uh, I'm gonna do my best to be able to give people a sense that I have the steady hand that I have the plans to keep us safe and that I will re rebuild our national security apparatus so that Americans can go about their business. Talk to me about where your campaign is right now because I know a lot of people who work for you they're pleased after Tuesday night's debate some cases relieved after Tuesday night's debate. They see this as an opportunity to perhaps uh, improve in a race that's been tough until now. I'm reading today in the New York Times, you have a project, New Hampshire. You may spend more than half your time between now and the New Hampshire primary up in the Granite State. How is this going to work? Well, it's, there's, we've always intended, starting in January, to spend disproportionate amount of time in the five or four states uh, in, in February starting with uh, Iowa and, of course, New Hampshire is really important. So nothing's changed in that regard. Uh, there's a more ten intense effort to do that for sure. As you, you know, as, look, as the circumstances change, you adjust, and that's exactly what we're doing. I feel good about where we are in the early states. We have a great organization, and I'm going to focus on the message, and I'll let the pundits opine, and I'll let our campaign do the operational side of it. You, you, I mean you don't think you can win Iowa anymore if you're going to spend more half your time in New Hampshire? No, I, I'm, I'm running to win every state. That's, look, I, you cannot be a candidate and say, I'm going for sixth place or something like that. That's not, that's not how uh, campaigns are run. I'm just saying my focus is on offering a hopeful, optimistic message about high sustained economic growth for our economy with detailed plans to do it and showing that I have the proven leadership skills to be able to keep us safe as a nation. Governor, can you keep up the paleo diet through the holidays? <laughs> no. I cheat. Uh, M&M's is my best uh, recourse to cheat once in a while. I can't, I, I can't afford to keep having to change my pants and clothes, so I, I'm cheating on a pretty regular basis. Well, Don't tell anybody, though. <laughs> no, we won't. We'll do our best not to tell anybody. Governor Bush, thank you for being with us. Happy holidays. Appreciate it, sir. Likewise. Thanks. All right.